Yesterday, I sent out a survey attempting to correlate audio beliefs to headphone choice. The questions were, do you believe frequency response is the largest determinant of perceived sound quality? Is harmonic distortion worth acknowledging? What sounds better, assuming identical volume? Benchmark AHB2 plus Hollow May or Apple Lightning dongle? Has Hyphaman ever made a good headphone? Which of these headphones sounds best? Let's analyze the responses. Two thirds of the 90 participants got the first answer correct. Frequency response is the largest determinant of perceived sound quality. 58.9% got the second question correct. Harmonic distortion isn't the largest determinant of perceived sound quality, but it is very important to consider. A headphone with perfect frequency response but atrociously high harmonic distortion is not worth listening to. Only 40% of the participants got the third question correct. The Apple Lightning dongle sounds identical to the benchmark AHB2 plus Hollow May. If you voted the Apple Lightning dongle, you would have gotten the lenient answer correct. The reason for this is because the question does not specify that this is a blind test or a subjective listening test. As a result, since the Apple Lightning dongle has a higher Coombe score than the benchmark AHB2 plus Hollow May, it is subjectively superior. Only 18.9% of the participants got the fourth question correct. No, Hi-Fi Man has never made a good headphone. Which of these headphones sounds best? Let's dissect each headphone one by one. Starting with the Apple AirPods Pro, none of the 11 were able to get all of the answers correct. This shows that true wireless dominant users are not very educated. On the Bayer Dynamic DT990, we have a similar story. None of them were able to get all answers correct. Two out of the five Dan Clark Stealth users were able to get three of the questions correct, meaning that they are smarter than the Bayer Dynamic DT990 and AirPods Pro users. Three of the Edimodic ER 2 se users were able to get all of the questions correct, Two of them were with lenient answers. Two of the Edimodic ER2 SE users were able to get absolute answers on the first three questions. One Focal Clear user was able to get all of the questions correct. This surprised me since the Focal Clear isn't that well measuring of a headphone. Two of the other three Focal Clear users were able to get the first three questions correct, meaning that it is likely there is some intelligence to Focal Clear users. Unsurprisingly, none of the Hyphaman Sespar users were able to get all of the questions correct. Only one of them was able to get the first three questions correct. Seriously, Hyphaman users are some of the dumbest people on earth, and not to be taken seriously at any cost. There were a lot of Sennheiser HU1 responses, and only one of them was able to get all of the questions correct. However, five of them were able to get the first three questions correct, meaning Sennheiser HU1 users are pretty smart, but they're not all the way there yet. None of the stacks SR009S users were able to get all of the questions correct. Only one of them got the first three questions correct. In conclusion, more Edimodic ER2 SE users were able to get all the questions correct compared to the other headphones. Additionally, it is also the cheapest headphone on this list. The best headphones, evidently, are not where the money is. In Northwest Audio and Video Guy's post, in the subjective versus objective audio debate, let's read what he says about the objectivists. This group tends to prefer some sort of science, measurements, or objective listening to back up claims of A is better than B. When reading a gear review, they're more likely to skip to measurement section, if there is one, than read subjective impressions. They tend to be skeptical of outrageous claims in ultra high price gear. They also tend to buy less expensive gear, less often, than subjectivists, making them less attractive to manufacturers. As mentioned above, they tend to be more satisfied with their system, so they spend more time just listening to music rather than the gear. Some have speculated this is because they're confident more of their hardware is already good enough. This would be the Edimodic ER2 SE users. Now let's read what he says about the subjectivists. The hardcore subjectivists trust their own ears above all else and often ignore, downplay, or sometimes even actively discredit objective efforts. Some argue that they have superior hearing and or listening and more refined tastes. That sometimes creates at least a whiff of an elitist club that some are drawn to. <coughs> Wayne! <coughs> Do not be a subjectivist. Be an Edimodic ER2SC realist. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment showing your support. Thank you.